So I got a question from Christy. She's a Patreon supporter and she asked, uh, sorry to disturb you, but I wonder if it's okay for you to talk about what is safe to give your pet as far as human medicine. Um, uh, you know, is it safe or not safe? Uh, Magnum's looking good. By tomorrow he'll be jumping up and down. Well, I don't know if he'll be jumping up and down, but sure. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the, the medicines. So, uh, I'm sure Christy's asking this because in one of my videos I talked about the fact that um, uh, it was recommended to give Magnum Mucinex DM, which is for clearing uh, chest and head congestion, basically, and um, it's typically used for humans. And then I also mentioned albuterol, which is an, uh, an, an inhaler, that's tough to say, an inhaler that is used for clearing uh, airways in the lungs. Um, so he's going to be uh, getting those. He's already getting the mucinex, and he's also going to be getting the albuterol when that arrives in the mail from Lisa Williams. Um, so here's the rule of thumb when it comes to human medicines. Uh, just because one human medicine is okay to give to a dog, don't assume that things are beeping and going off. It always happens when I do a video. Then my phone's going off, messenger's going off. It always happens. Um, anyway. So don't assume that because one human medicine is safe to give to a dog that another is safe to give to a dog. And dosage is different. So what you need to do is just Google search it. If you're not sure, Google search it. Uh, same thing you do with foods, by the way. So since certain foods are unsafe for dogs, uh, any... Okay, uh, apparently my battery died on my camera, so... All right, we're going again. Uh, so anytime you're going to give <coughs> your pet, your dog, your cat, whatever, any kind of human food or any kind of human medicine just do a simple Google search that's what I do so you know you can Google is Benadryl safe for dogs is Mucinex DM safe for dogs are potatoes safe for dogs are grapes safe for dogs and, and in some of those cases no they are definitely not safe they actually are poisonous or dangerous so just do a simple Google search is blank safe for my dog or safe for dogs or, or cat or whatever the you know whatever the animal is um, and then also, if it's medicines, make sure you're checking dosage because something like Benadryl, as a, as a matter of fact, which is an antihistamine, um, you know, if the human dosage for Benadryl is here, for dogs, for it to be effective, the Benadryl dosage for dogs is like up here. You know, it's, it's a significant higher a, a dosage of Benadryl to have the same effect as an antihistamine as it is for a human. So not only do you need to check to see if the, the particular medicine is safe for your dog, but you also need to check to see about the dosage and see what the dosage is per pound of dog, for instance. So hopefully that helps, Christy. Uh, thank you for asking that question. It was a great question. And um, I use human medicines all the time uh, or often. Here's another one. Um, Magnum uh, often has and it's just him because I've had other Danes, I've had giant breed dogs almost all my life. Uh, almost none of them have had uh, bowel issues like irritable bowel or anything like that. But Magnum, for whatever reason, is one of those dogs that has always had irritable bowel. Um, and it's just something the vet's like, yeah, the vet, my regular vet's like, yeah, you're just probably going to have to live with that, you know, for his life. So what that means is that uh, every so often, without warning, even if nothing in his diet has changed, he'll have diarrhea. And uh, it's diarrhea that just won't stop. If, you, if you're trying to wait it out, it'll go for days. So what I do is the moment that he has one of those breakouts, and I go, uh-oh, here it is. We're, it's time. And I can usually tell because his gas gets really, really bad right before it happens. So then what I do, um, and this was with the advice of uh, the vet, and the vet says it's fine, is now this is the generic, but I give him Imodium AD. So Imodium anti-diarrheal, and uh, or the generic is Loper. I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Loperamide is the generic. Loperamide HCI. Um, so I just buy the generic because it's cheaper. But and that's the other thing. Always buy generics if you can. I mean, just like with these antibiotics. And if you're wondering if you know, you don't need to buy the brand name of the things. You just don't. Especially with medicines, just look on the back at the ingredients. And as long as the active ingredients are the same as what's in the brand name box, and you can grab one of each right off the store shelf and compare them, if the generic is the same active ingredient as the brand name active ingredient, buy the generic. Save yourself money, you know. I mean, these are like half the price of the brand name. And you'll see that often with generics. And I'm not telling most of you guys anything you don't already know, but generics are usually much cheaper. 
Um, so I always keep this on hand. I keep Imodium AD, the generic anti-diarrheal anti on hand all times because this guy always has a recurring issue with diarrhea, you know, like once a month or something like that. So anyway, this, this, and this kicks it right into gear. Um, and so again, this is the kind of thing, if you weren't sure, Google it. Google search it and then search the, uh, also Google search the, the dosage amount. And for him, since he's the size of a lot of adults or bigger than a lot of adults at 170 pounds or so, um, then he just gets a full adult dose just like an adult would. So yeah, so I just keep that on hand. Um, what else? I do have a uh, Benadryl, which I use for me, but I have also used it for my dogs in the past whenever there's been an issue of some sort. Although I've never really had that issue with Magnum. Um, another one is melatonin. Uh, the reason now, uh, I don't give this to Magnum much anymore, but I used to. And oddly enough, the reason, I think I may have talked about this in another video. Uh, melatonin is good for helping um, create relaxation and sleep in people. And it's also okay for dogs. Um, and the reason I oddly started giving him this was not for sleep. It was because he, uh, I think it was the first year I got him, he started developing these, uh, these large patches of hair loss. And it was just like, the hair was just falling out. Like, you know, about this big around on his body. Like one here and one over here. And, and it was basically alopecia. If you know what alopecia is, it's basically an undiagnosed hair loss. And people can get it too. You'll see people sometimes with alopecia on their scalp uh, where they just have like a chunk of hair, like a circle of hair missing. And there's no redness, there's no irritation. The hair just falls out. Um, and so being that it was alopecia, I, I looked up the reason or if, you know, other dogs had had this. And, it was, and what I discovered is that apparently it goes back to my main complaint about the Northwest. It's not enough sun. And not having enough sun here creates a, just like with people, with dogs apparently it can too, it can create a seasonal cycle disorder or a seasonal effect disorder where their bodies don't seem to understand like day, night, or they're not getting enough of a full day cycle, basically, if that makes sense. And so what this does is this helps get them back on cycle. Um, and that, weirdly enough, that somehow correlates to hair loss. That seasonal effect or that seasonal disorder because not enough sun creates, see, it, it creates, uh, in this case, it created hair loss, big patchy hair loss. So I had Googled it, researched it, and found out that some people were realizing that this worked to, to remedy that, which was melatonin. So I started giving him the melatonin and sure enough, the hair started coming back in. I mean, big patches of baldness on his body and his hair started growing back pretty shortly after I started giving him this. Um, and then what I realized as a side effect, well not a side effect, but as an added benefit, is that it also, and it wasn't intentional, but this it seemed to correlate, is this also seemed to firm up his stools. It seemed to firm up what he was putting out. Um, and so, I'm like, well, there's another added benefit. So not only was it growing his hair back and thickening his hair, and I, I found online that uh, there were some uh, mink farms, I think it was, you know, where they grow, mink, or where they raise minks to raise them for their coats, which is not something I'm, I'm not, I don't approve of that. But the point was, is they were saying that on those mink farms, uh, they would, uh, they give the, the animals that they're raising for their coats, they give them melatonin because it thickens up their hair thickens up their hair and gives them fuller, shinier coats, apparently. So it helped his hair come back in. It was helping the output be firmer. So, you know, not so whatever. And, um, yeah. And so I gave this to him for a long time. I don't really give him to it. I don't give it to him much anymore because his hair is fine. Um, other than scar, where he has scar tissue from before I got him. He has some scar tissue in a few places. His hair's not going to grow there anyway. But the rest of his body, the hair's come back in. And I supplement his food with pumpkin now, so I don't really need to rely on this for firming up, you know, what comes out. But the point is, is that there are things like this, which are perfectly fine to give your animal, just Google search it. Um, and then of course now we're adding to that list, uh, what else? So we're adding to that list now Mucinex DM, which is also safe for him, and that's at an adult dose. I'm just looking to see if there was anything else that I noticed that I have 
that uh, that I give him. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that's pretty much it. So Christy, just Google search it. It's pretty simple. Um, there are a lot of effective things that can be given to dogs and or cats, and so you know avail yourself of them if if you need to. All right. Okay, so another uh, little tip, or a little tip that I do that helps with uh, electric refrigerator like this not running as hard, is I have these uh, ice blocks that I keep in my freezer, and then what I do is I also have them in my refrigerator. So there's one here, and then there's another one of these that sits behind my eggs and these uh, bratwursts here. And so what I do at the beginning of each day, because uh, I unplug my refrigerator and freezer at night so they're not running all night, which runs down the battery, what I do is uh, each morning I take the more frozen ones from up here and I swap them out with these two that are inside the refrigerator and then I take the ones that are more thawed from here, stick them in the freezer and let them freeze up when I'm running my um, freezer and refrigerator all day long because of my battery isolator being on and uh, the generator and whatever else. So what that means is that I'm always swapping the more frozen ice blocks to put in the refrigerator and that means the refrigerator doesn't have to run as hard because now the refrigerator is getting help. The refrigerator is getting help from those ice blocks, if that makes sense. So it's just another little tip. It doesn't really cost anything to do that. Uh, I mean, you're already running your freezer anyway, so why not use those frozen blocks as a means to help the refrigerator not have to work as hard? So just thought I'd pass that on. So I goofed. I was uh, putting uh, this video together and I almost forgot to include the animals and boy I would have heard about that wouldn't I? So let me, uh, I decided I better whip the camera out and shoot some footage of the animals real quick. He's like, what do you have for me? Uh, I don't have anything for you. You already had your dinner. And you had your medicines. Yes sir. Alright. And we know where Stanley's going to be. Should we see, let's see if we can surprise him. Meow. 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 Alright. He's like, get that light out of my face. Alright guys, that's it. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. I'll... <laughs> wow. Just flash the light right in your eyes. Alright, I'll see you guys on the next video. Alright, bye.